Hey everyone, and welcome back to the MernStack Crash Course. In this episode, we're going to finish the rest of our React pages. We'll make the functionality to create a blog post, and we'll add in some filler content for the rest of our site. There's a few more pages I want to focus on us building. First of all, the create blog post, and then the about us and the contact pages. After that, we'll focus on our last two pages, the landing page and the profile page. However, we'll go over these two pages next episode when we do user authentication. The about us and contact page will be super quick since there's not really a whole lot of functionality there. So let's actually save those for last. So we'll focus on creating the create blog page first. This is a super important part of our app because without the ability to create new blog posts, we don't really have a functional blog site. First, let's make sure we have the create blog.jsx file created and in our pages folder, and then we can get to work. We know we're going to be using state to help store the post we're submitting. So let's go ahead and first import use state from React. Once we've imported it, let's think about what we'll need on this page. For each post, we want the user to be able to make a title for it, a description, and write the actual blog content itself. That's all we're going to need in terms of user input because the fields like author and date created can be filled in automatically with JavaScript. First things first, we'll treat this submission page like a form. So let's make our outermost JSX tag a form tag, just like this. Next, we're going to give this an on submit property. On submit works similarly to on click and on change. Basically, it's a way to handle an event, in this particular case, a form submission. Whenever this on submit is triggered, let's call an imaginary function just called handle submit. You'll see how this handle submit comes into play in just a moment, but for now, let's build out our form. Let's now get started with the three input fields that we need. We'll make the first one an input with a self closing tag and just give it a name of title. And then I'm just going to take this, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to paste it twice. And let's change this one here to description. And then let's change this one here to content. And these are the three essential input fields that we're going to need for creating a blog post. And actually, since content was going to be a larger text box, let's actually make this a text area instead of input. And then what I'm going to do for each of these inputs is I'm going to make a label tag for each one, just so the user knows what each one is for. So I'll say label here, we'll say blog post title. And then let's go ahead and just copy this. And let's paste it below each of these and just write these labels out accordingly. We'll name this one blog description. And then we will just name this one blog content. Just so you can see what this page now looks like, I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And uh, it looks like we defined this handle submit function up here, but we didn't actually, or sorry, we're calling handle submit, but we didn't actually define it. Let me just write, I'm not actually going to fill out the content yet. I'll just write this right here, just so it stops giving us this error. And here you'll see we have now three input fields on our page. It's a pretty simple page layout with just three text boxes and some labels to show what each one means. Now it's time to get into the real React functionality for this page. The first thing we'll want to do is create state that can hold each of our variables for our text fields, meaning we'll want a piece of state for our title, one for our description, and one for our content. This is so we can update these fields in real time. So let's go ahead and go up here and create these three pieces of state. For title, we'll say const title, set title. And we're going to set all these equal to empty strings just to start. Let's copy this, paste it twice. This will be description and then set description. And then lastly, we'll have content and then set content. Next, we'll want to add an on change property to each of the text boxes that we have on this page. I have multiple videos going over how to use the on change tag. But basically what it does is calls some function every single time something within the tag changes. For example, if I have an on change property within the title field here, and I go into the title box, every time I type a letter, delete a letter, or make any other possible change, we're going to call whatever function we put inside on change. To add an on change property, all we need to do is write, oops, all we need to do here is go in here and add on change like this and set it equal to a JavaScript expression. Every time something happens in this tag, it's stored in what's called an event, which most people will just denote as E. So we'll add E as an argument. Then we'll add the arrow function here. And now we just want to call the set title function to set our title to whatever is currently in the text field. In JavaScript, it's stored in this event object in a property called value, which is within another property called target. So all you need to do to access it is write E.target.value. What this line here implies is that every single time I make a change to this title input, we're going to call this function right here that says set title to e.target.value. And what this actually implies is that upon any change, we're going to be setting the title state to whatever is currently in the text box. 
meaning it updates in real time. So the state will change upon every update. Let's go ahead and take this whole chunk here. Let's get on change. Let's actually copy it and let's paste it into our other input fields as well. And obviously we'll need to change the names of these. So this one should say set description because it's the description field. And then this one should say set content because it is the content field. Now, each time we change any one of these fields, their respective state will be updated accordingly. In order to actually submit this form, we should make a button tag here at the very bottom. So I'll make one called button. And then I'll just, let's put it in the text for right now. We'll just say submit. And then what we'll need to do to actually submit it is give it this property called type equals submit. Anytime you have a button inside of a form and you give it this type equals submit, it tells the form that whenever you click this button, you'll invoke whatever function is in this on submit tag right here. So let's go ahead and save this page. And now let's write this handle submit function that we defined up here. So let's actually think about what this function needs to do. Well, it needs to combine all these state fields into a single object. And then it needs to upload that object to MongoDB so that we can store it as a blog post. So let's inside this function, create a brand new object. And I'm just going to call it a submit object. So I'll say let submit object equals, and we'll do our curly brackets. And we'll just want to aggregate all three pieces of our state into this object. So first we'll make a property called title and set it equal to title from our React state. Then we'll make a property called description that equal to description from our React state. And then we'll do the exact same for content and get content from our React state. Now we filled this submit object with the React state we're gathering from our text fields. However, remember that in Mongo, we actually have five fields. We have title, description, content. Then we also have author and date created. So we'll need to add the author and date created fields in here as well. The author field will take care of next episode when we actually do the user authentication part of it. So for right now, I'm just going to make an author field here and I'm going to set it to null. But we also need to make date created and that's actually really easy to do. All we need to do is write new date just like this. This new date line calls the constructor of the built-in JavaScript date object and we'll set it equal to whatever time it currently is right at that moment. Real quick before we submit, I should quickly mention that if you want, you have the option of putting all these three pieces of state in a single piece of state. Sometimes people like having one piece of state and make it an object with the keys, title, description, and content and whatever else they wanted. I would do that if we had a ton of fields, but since we only have three, that's why we're just keeping them as separate pieces of state. However, now that we have our object ready to be uploaded, we should import the create post function from our API that'll handle all the MongoDB functionality for us. So I'll just say import, and it is just create post. And that is from our API file. Once we have that, all that we actually need to do to submit our blog post is go down here, and let's just call this function that we just imported create post. We'll say create post and we'll pass in the submit object that we just created. And this create post function in our API file is actually defined as asynchronous since it won't execute instantly. So let's actually turn this handle submit function into an async function up here. And then we'll add the await keyword in front of create post. We're not doing anything in this function after we call create post. So technically you don't actually need the await keyword and it won't really do much. But I just think it's standard practice to always await any functions that are asynchronous. Now, what we've done on this page is created three text fields where users can directly alter three pieces of React state, that being the title, description, and content of a blog post. Then they can click this submit button right here to publish this blog post, which we'll call this handle submit function, and we'll actually upload it to MongoDB by calling this create post function we made in our API. Before we call this good and move on to testing this, there's a few things we should check to make sure our form input is valid. First of all, it would probably be smart to put a character limit on these fields so a user couldn't just, let's say, input 15 million characters in a field and just flood our database. Secondly, right now we're still able to submit this form even if one of these fields here is blank, so we should have a check to make sure that all the fields are filled out. Adding a max length on all of our input fields is actually super easy. If we go to any one of our input fields here, we can go in here and we can specify a property actually called max length just like this. And then we can set it equal to whatever number we want the character limit to be. For title, let's just set it to 100. And then we'll go ahead and copy this and let's paste it into these other two blocks here. For description, let's make the max length, let's say 200. And then for content, since content is going to be the largest field, let's do a large number. Let's just say 5,000 character limit. If I go ahead and now save this file, 
and I were to go in this blog post title and type forever, there would be a limit where it would basically not let me type anymore. And you can see we've reached that wall already. So let's go ahead and just delete this real quick. And then next, if I can delete it fast enough. And then next we'll focus on handling the cases where not all the fields are filled out. There's a lot of different ways that we can actually handle this. One way to do it would be in our handle submit function up here. We could just write like a big if statement, basically checking each field saying like, if not title or not description or not content, and then throw some error or something along those lines. However, I have a much simpler solution that only requires one word. In each of our input fields down here, we can actually go over here and we can just add a property called required. And this will make sure that the form cannot submit if these, if these fields here are not filled out. So let's add required to all of our input fields. Now that we actually have this page pretty fleshed out, let's go ahead and save this. And then let's run some testing to see if we can actually upload blog posts to MongoDB. So for title, I'll just say something like, I am testing the title. For description, I'll say, insert filler blog description, something like this. And then for content, I'll say, this course is meant to teach people how to build full stack React applications. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open up our console here to see if we have any errors. Uh, oh, these are errors from earlier. And let's go ahead and press submit. So let's actually go to our Mongo database and let's see what happened. Let's go ahead and refresh this page. And let's look at our post here. And at the very bottom of the screen here, you can see we have a new blog post object right here with the fields that we just inputted. So it said I'm testing the title, insert filler blog description, and this course is meant to teach people how to build full stack React applications. So it looks like I filled out all the fields completely correctly. This is awesome because now we have the ability to just create blog posts in our app however and whenever we want. Being a blog website, this is probably the most essential feature. And I'll actually show you if we go back to our site here and we go back to home, you'll see that we now actually have this new blog post right here. We can click on it here and it'll have all this information on the page. Now that we have this hugely important feature out of the way, let's flesh out our two super easy pages, the about us page and the contact page. You don't actually need these pages if all you're going for is a simple and easy blog, but since many real websites do have pages similar to these, we'll have them on our site as well. Because they're super simple, I'm gonna do these pages off screen so I don't waste your time, but I'll quickly explain how they work. So I went ahead and made a super simple about us page. All it is is just a couple of paragraph tags that have some text in it that I just filled with some random words. You can see how simple it is if we have a look at the actual about us page over here on the left, since it's just some text on a page. The only thing really worth noting on this page is that I imported the link component from React Writer DOM, and then I made this link here that just links directly to the create blog page in case a user wants to click on it to create a blog. Aside from that, this page is pretty bare bones and only took me like two minutes to make. Next, we'll head over to our contact page in our code and have it open up on our site here as well. You can see this page is definitely a little bit more involved than the about us page, but it's definitely nothing too crazy. Again, I just made some basic paragraph tags here with some super simple text in them. And then at the bottom, I made my own little custom form element almost identical to how we made the create blog form. There's labels for each one of these fields. There's inputs for each one of the input fields. And then there's a button at the very bottom to go ahead and submit the form. When we submit it, we're calling this function called handle submit, which is defined up here. And you can see it doesn't actually do anything right now. If you wanted some sort of email service or something like that in your app, this is where you could call some of those functions if you wanted. However, that's beyond the scope of what we're trying to do. So we just have this function here as a template in case they wanted to actually do anything when the user submits the form. Other than that, this page is super, super simple. Now you're probably thinking all these pages we've just made are super, super ugly and unappealing, and you'd be exactly right. But if we just hold off for a little bit and get these next few episodes out of the way, we'll end this series with a full styling episode where we make all this stuff look like it's actually professional and like it wasn't built on a Nintendo DS. And with that, we'll wrap up this episode. In this episode, we built the functionality to create a blog post and upload it to MongoDB, as well as created two easy pages, the about us page and the contact page. In the very next episode, we'll take care of user authentication, which will allow us to create user accounts and log into the site with our own unique profile. We'll also flesh out the very last two pages, the landing page and the profile page. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.